Today's topic is color psychology and theory in depth for your fighting force. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pan. I'm Cal, and I'm Sunny. Today we'll be covering color psychology and color theory in depth, so you know how to design your fighting force with the right meanings behind it. Color theory is the how, and color psychology is more the why, why. and the what. Yes. Color theory is the execution part of design. It tells you how to make your design look good. Some people feel that they are complete slaves to the color theory. It does have some exceptions to the rule, but even those exceptions still fit somewhere within the rules of color theory. Color is affected by a few basic considerations. The first of which is hue. Hue is the actual color of the color. Saturation is how powerful or vibrant the color is. Value is more easily understood as light or darkness, and it is exactly what it sounds like, how light or dark the color is. Primary colors are colors that cannot be created by mixing two other colors. These are red, yellow, and blue. Secondary colors are created by mixing any two of these primary colors. They are orange, green, and purple. Tertiary means third level, and they are created by mixing both primary and secondary colors. Like violet, teal, or magenta. Color scheme means the arrangement of colors in a pleasing way, usually in our case for an army or fighting force. So by fighting force, it could be a chapter, a faction, a war band, etc. Now that the basics are out of the way, we're going to be talking about color psychology. Color psychology has two factors that need to be considered before we get into them. They are cross-cultural and cultural. Cross-cultural can be thought of as universal or more accurately, biological. Red is the first color we see as a child and yellow is the hardest to see spectrum of light for us. So hard in fact that it can cause babies to cry. In fact, our eyes see in red, green and blue with their rods and cones rather than the primary colors. Cultural is that which is unique to a particular culture. For example, in Western Euro cultures, in the past, pink was seen as the immature color of red reserved for boys before they turn into men. But in modern times, pink is seen as a feminine color, so much so that if you use pink in the men's visiting locker rooms and sports arenas, it actually negatively impacts their performance on the field, so much so that it was banned. In context, does matter and it does have an effect regardless of whether it is cultural or biological. Yes, in some cases, cross-cultural can be more dominant than some cultural aspects. At the end of each color, we are going to be talking about colors associated with it. However, there are some easy rules to follow. If their values are increased or decreased, made lighter or darker, you can literally add that to their color psychology profile, meaning you can lighten or darken their meanings. Note that we say lightened or darkened. For example, purple is the color of royalty, but a lighter purple shows that it's more frivolous and less serious. Not exactly a good trait. With yellow, if you darken it, it becomes amber, usually used for warning signs and traffic lights. Red. Red is part of the RGB scale and is one of the first colors we see as a child, as well as being one of the longest wavelengths of light. Red is the color with the most cross-culturally cohesive meanings because of one thing. Blood. Red is the color of action, power, and violence. In short, it's highly intense. And highly polarized. Red has a number of meanings that you may have already incorporated into your language. Like seeing red, meaning enraged. Power tie, the red tie. And turning red, seeing an object of affection or being embarrassed. Red is the color of anger as well as love. It is unsurprising that it is the call to action button on websites as well as stop signs. In terms of fighting forces, red is most associated with being blooded, meaning having seen action. Some examples of a fighting force with a predominant color of red would be Blood Angels, Kador, Lexington Combat Group, Imperial Royal Guards, and Nomads. Color associations Aggression, Appetite, Passion, Power, and Love. Positive traits Strength, warmth, masculinity, excitement, and stimulation. Negative traits Uncontrolled anger, tiring, ruthless, resentful, violence. Associated colors Burgundy, maroon, and pink. Burgundy 
Burgundy is a dark shade of red named after a French wine produced in the French region of Burgundy. It is usually seen as a mysterious and serious color, which is associated with high society and the powers and ambitions that come with it. And with all shades and tints, the cultural impacts intensifies, as you can see, with the color being named after a French region. Maroon. One of the most ubiquitous shades of red, often thought of as a brown, with a dash of purple or blue. The word maroon means to leave someone trapped with little chance of escape, or to describe someone who's run wild. It is linked with passion and excitement, however it has a more earthy connection. Thus a more down-to-earth connection with aggression and intensity. In Australia it is associated with Queensland and has associations with the working class, football and cane toads. Once again it can be seen that culture impacts shades and tints more than true colours. Pink Pink is the ultimate representation of the effects of culture on a color. As we mentioned previously, it was associated with the color for boys, the immature color of red for men. But these days, it's seen as a feminine color for women and for girls. But this effect is so powerful that it is banned from being used in men's locker rooms and sports arenas because it affects their performance. They have also tried to use this in prisons to calm prisoners down, but the effects are mixed at best. Pink is seen as the gentle red, softening some of its most hardest edges. So for example, instead of lust, love, instead of passion, intimacy. Yellow. Yellow is the only color that we do not see in the RGB scale. Yellow is the hardest color to see of all of the primary colors. Yet ironically, it is one of the most positive colors due to its two primary associations, the sun and gold. Yellow is associated with positivity and happiness, yet with the research we did before, we discovered something else. Dominion. As seen with these yellow logos, they either are dominant or aspire to dominance. Though before many's time, yellow pages used to dominate the advertising market. McDonald's dominates the fast food industries the world over. Cat or caterpillar vehicles dominate the mining industry as well as most construction industries. However, yellow has the least universal or cross-cultural meanings across the other primary colors because major religions have different associations with it. In Buddhism, it is seen as humility and the separation from materialism. In Hinduism, it is the color of purity, chastity, and surprisingly sensuality as unmarried girls wear it. In the Arab and Muslim worlds, having a yellow smile is being seen as cruel. Some examples of yellow as a predominant color for a fighting force would be Bad Moons House Baratheon Golden Lions Stormcast Eternal Yujing Color Associations Energy, Clarity, Creativity, Enthusiasm, and Happiness Positive Traits Witty, Optimistic, Confident, Adventurous, and Hope Negative Traits Anxiety, Cowardice, Cruelty, Superficial, and Abrasive Associated colors. Amber, beige, and gold. Amber, given its name by fossilized tree resin, it is associated with safety, warmth, and warning. Used in traffic lights the world over. Amber is usually what people will use when they say yellow. Amber is essentially yellow with the edges sanded off. Beige. Beige is a yellow sandy brown color which brings about the feelings of tranquility and comfort. It is also tied heavily with modernism. The negative qualities of it however is also tied with that same modernism being something that feels a bit unnatural. Brands like Ericsson, Singer, KitchenAid in the 1980s used this color a lot and its ubiquity will forever connect it to that era. Gold. Gold will be covered in metallics due to yellow gold and true gold having almost one-to-one -one meanings. Blue. Blue is the world's favorite color on average. Some scholars believe that seeing blue is a recent mutation with lines like the wine dark sea from Homer's Odyssey. It is also believed that it was due to a lack of language. Indeed, if you have more names for a color, you can actually see more colors. Westerners or English speakers can see more hues of blues than Africans. Africans can see more greens than Westerners and Russians can see more reds than both of them. Note this is due to language, not 
due to biology. You have probably incorporated some of the color in your language, like feeling blue meaning sad. Blue is seen as the most passive color because it is connected with water and sky. That's why it's seen as a very peaceful color and is connected with concepts like dependability, trustworthiness, and competence. Some examples of blue as a predominant fighting force color would be Ultramarines Cigna Federated Commonwealth Corps Ideneth Deepkin Pan-Oceanian Color Associations Dependable, Stable, Cool, Competent, and Communication Positive Traits Loyal, Honest, Attentive, Confident, and Trustworthy Negative Traits Sensitive, Self-Deprecating, Stubborn, Depression, and Cold Associated colors. Navy, royal blue, denim. Navy. Navy blue is given its name by its association with the Navy. However, its association with the military is far longer than its association with the modern Navy. So its meanings are tied up with the military, both positive and negative. Except there is a new military that uses it, the corporate world. The most common use of navy blue isn't with the navy, but with suits. Suits come from military uniforms. However, due to the corporate world having more influence over modern people, the corporate world's meanings have overtaken that of the militaries for both positive and negative. Royal blue. Royal blue has its connection with the fashion world and royalty, thus its name. Just like navy blue, it has evolved in its meaning and is completely taken over by the fashion world. It is seen as the color of prestige and elegance. In terms of miniature wargaming, if you're going to paint your miniatures this bright, they think their <laughs> doesn't stink. And you have to avoid them because they're one of the elites. Denim, gaining its name from the fabric, it, despite being a desaturated and lighter color, is considered a tough color. This is purely due to its association with the fabric and those who wear it, the working class. It is also connected to the blue of the blue collar jobs, that of the working class. Once again, it can be seen how culture has an overly impactful effect on color. Because look at how the meanings change when it becomes dark denim or acid washed denim. The associations with standard denim are completely removed because these are associated with main street fashion. This means that painting denim can be particularly difficult for miniature painters due to the use of highlights and shades, making it so that it could change to a dark denim or acid wash denim if one uses too much of one technique or the other. Green. Green is sometimes seen as a more primary color than yellow because our eyes see in red, green, and blue. It is also strongly connected with nature and ironically, toxification. With design language, you can see that anything being toxic will be shown as green, like in video games, movies, and elsewhere. This is probably due to 18th and 19th century green wallpapers and paints containing arsenic being so toxic that it ate into the walls. Despite this variability, green is cross-culturally known for being connected with nature, so much so that every eco-friendly brand uses green in their logo. But it's not just companies that latch onto this concept it is also used to inspire poetry like Robert Frost's Nature's first green is golden. So when using green, you have to be very careful because its associations and meanings can be hard to navigate. Some examples of a fighting force with green as the predominant color would be Nurgle Death Guard Circle of Ouroboros Wood Elves Army of the Dead and Hakislam Color Associations Nature, toxic, serenity, disgust, and friendly. Positive traits. Prosperity, luck, safety, health, hope. Negative traits. Envy, judgmental, inexperienced, greed, and sickness. Color association. Green is a very variable color. Unlike the other colors, it's hard to categorize the specific shades and tints that it has because some of them actually overlap each other even though they pretty much look the same. Indeed, some of the times the names of colors will overlap when you're looking for them on Google or other areas. So rather than giving you specific names, we are going to go over the general principles of how green has changed. 
However, we will give you some names and hope that Google treats you kindly. Values is probably the easiest way you can adjust green's meanings. If you go darker, it has more foreboding feeling. Due to its connection with nature, deep dark forests were a nightmare for early humans, filled with predators we couldn't see. And with lighter greens, it reminds us of the sunlight beaming through the leaves, the first growth of spring, crops coming into fruition. Indeed, nature's first green is golden. In short, darker means bad, lighter means good. Changing green's hue and saturation is the best way to change its meaning. Although it looks like a regular green, Shield's green will forever be linked with toxification. This is due to the copper arsenic used in the creation of this color. So when you see this specific color in games and in movies, it's usually to portray toxification. So be careful when navigating green, but you can usually rely on the following rules. If you make green cooler by adding blue, it gives a more refreshing tone. If you add blue just enough so that it doesn't become teal, it gives a color of emerald, which is linked with wealth because of the gem. Though desaturated, the American dollar is also this cooler green. But if you add yellow to green, it becomes more vibrant. It reminds us of how the light from the sun passes through the green of the leaves, making it more vibrant. This would also be known as that golden green. But when you add gray, you end up with more military colors like khaki, drab, or olive. When using realistic or modern fighting forces, these are the colors you think of. However, when using it in a fantasy setting, these same colors become the colors of the peasantry, colors linked with the earth and nature. This is mostly due to the effect of movies, though realistic peasants historically wore very bright colors. Always use caution when using green in your design due to the fact that shades, tints, values, hues, and saturation can change the meaning of green quite easily. Purple. Purple is well known for its associations with royalty and nobility, as well as a new association, that with luxury brands. Indeed, luxury brands such as Ralph Lauren reserve their most luxurious products with the purple label. These meanings are clearly culturally ingrained due to how expensive the dye was, created by the Phoenicians by crushing sea slug snails. But there are other interesting associations, that of mysticism and magic. This is probably due to the rarity of purple in nature. The only large sources of purple in nature are due to things that humans often cultivate, such as lilacs, lavender, and grapes. In nature, purple is rare. Thus, it has a unique and exotic feeling and brings out those same emotions within people. Some examples of fighting forces using purple as the predominant color would be Pre-Heresy Emperor's Children Legion of Everblight Dark Elves Slanesh Demons And Orcs Color Association Royalty, Rarity, Mystery, Magic, and Spirituality Positive Traits Unique, Creative, Individualistic, Empathic, and Sophisticated Negative traits. Sensitive, arrogance, paranoia, idealistic, and emotional. Associated colors. Violet, lavender, mauve. Violet. Violet is the shortest wavelength of light, and this is why it's seen in the rainbow rather than purple. Much like how we see in red, green, and blue and not yellow, purple is a color mixture, and violet is a more natural purple. This is probably why violet is connected with cosmic and magical energy, and also connected with narcissism and hypersensitivity. Probably due to those who are obsessed with magic and mysticism are narcissistic and hypersensitive. Those that use this color are more likely to be connected with spirituality and magic. Lavender. Lavender gains its name from the flower of the same name. It is connected with nature, probably due to it being the most prevalent source of purple in the natural world due to its cultivation, perhaps with the exception of grapes. Lavender is sometimes seen as the feminine purple and is connected with youth and vitality. It has strong connections with spirituality. However, this is probably due to the reason it's cultivated. It is used in anointing oils.
In terms of design, it's used in nurseries as well as other areas where calming is required. Mauve. Mauve comes from the same root as the flower mallow, malva in Latin. The color was accidentally created while trying to find a cure for malaria by William Henry Perkin. Instead, he created a dye of this color, and it quickly became popular in the fashion world when Coco Chanel made it famous. Ever since, it has been seen as a fashionable and feminine color used in both fashion and cosmetics. Culture's influence on this color is once again very dominant. Despite this, it is connected with being aloof, friendly, kind, and generous. A quick note on associated purple colors. When it comes to war games, purple and its associated colors can easily be misused due to their odd associations. The deeper and more vibrant the purple, it is more related to royalty and rulership, as well as decadence and sin. The more lighter and desaturated the purple, it is more correlated with femininity, and it becomes a very soft color, which is probably why you don't see it very often in major factions and war games. Orange. Created through a combination of red and yellow. Unlike green and purple, it takes both of its parent colors meanings and merges them together. Orange is the color of energy, probably due to its brightness without the harshness of yellow. However, this may be actually literal in that this color gives energy with fruits and vegetables like oranges, yam, sweet potato, and pumpkin. Even some orange flowers are known to be edible. This, along with the sun, is probably why its positive associations are so cross-culturally relevant. However, it has gained new negative meanings recently due to design language using it in high danger environments, usually traffic situations and construction. Fighting forces with a predominantly orange theme. Trans-Hyperion Alliance. Adeptus Mechanicus Riser. Tiangao. Rolling Thunder Company. And Wood Elves. Color Associations. Fire, Heat, Vibrancy, Spontaneity, Attention Grabbing. Positive Traits. Warmth, Safety, Positivity, Youth, and Sociability. Negative Traits. Impatient, Exhibitionism, Distracting, Superficial, and Insincere. Associated Colors. Safety Orange, Autumn. Sienna. Safety Orange. This color is sometimes also known as Hunter's Orange or International Orange. This color is also well known with high visibility gear, with traffic workers, hunters, road maintenance staff, anywhere where people need to be seen. This is an extremely vibrant and unnatural shade of orange. Due to its cultural association, this color is strongly linked with danger. Unusually for such a vibrant and bright color, it's associated with the working class. Due to its use in high visibility gear. Due to these associations, it's avoided in use in fashion, so it's highly unlikely that wealthy people will wear this color. Autumn Orange. This almost fits within the brown category and gains its name from the season of the same name. Autumn, known as the season of change, it has the same connotations as that of the season, that of Harvest, Halloween, and Melancholia. It is also due to this connection that it has a connection to warmth without the heat. Much like amber, autumn orange is orange with the edges rounded off. It is an excellent choice for a more controlled orange. Less energetic, but more comfortable. Sienna. Sienna gets its name from the clay, which is rich in iron oxide and manganese oxide. And unsurprisingly, it comes from the city with the same name. This may also be one of the oldest colors used by humans and even Neanderthals. It's still used in art today. Most sapias are derivatives of sienna. It is a very warm and comfortable color than most oranges. It is best used in connection with humble or common people due to its ancient nature. 
Tertiary colors. Tertiary or intermediate colors are made by combining both a secondary and a primary color. However, due to us covering associated colors, there are a number of colors that have been covered incidentally. But there are still two that need to be covered in particular. That would be magenta and the aqua family. Brown, though considered by some as a tertiary color, it is not. It is a compound or composite color, so it will be covered in neutrals. Magenta. Along with cyan and yellow, it was part of the early printing press and is still used in printing today in that same scale. It's a purplish red color and it got its name from the Battle of Magenta. Previously, it was known as Fushin. Because magenta doesn't exist on the visible light spectrum for us humans, it can't be generated using a single wavelength of light. It's a color our brain creates to fill in a gap within the light spectrum in a way that we can understand, which is probably why artists love this color so much. The reason why magenta is particularly important is because it shows something about colors, design, and language. People will often talk about how psychology is seen as the soft science, but what this shows is that perception is far more important than anything else. If people believe in something, it becomes reality. We can't see magenta, and yet there it is. This confirms that perception is everything. This information was collected from a variety of sources, from psychology, art, art history, as well as marketing. This is our best way to give information in a short period of time. Next time someone says all of that is made up, just ask them, what color is this? Tell them they just made it up. Context does matter. In design language and color psychology, it is a warm and welcoming color, despite its intensity. In feng shui, magenta is known as a color of harmony, both on a personal and universal level. Maybe because magenta is an imaginary color, it doesn't have all the negative traits of its parent colors, red and purple, which are known to be colors of arrogance. But instead, magenta's negative traits follows a lot like yellow, impatient, careless, and domineering, perhaps because of its brightness. It's considered to be both an expressive and relaxing color. One thing's for sure, magenta's eye-catching. Aqua family. We're grouping a lot of colors together here because, like greens, they overlap a lot. Sometimes if you ask someone, cyan, aqua, teal, and turquoise could all be the exact same color. Sometimes, even if you ask the same search engine. This is why we've been using the Pantone colors in hopes it will help you with your color searches. Aquas have a connection with one thing above all others, water, more specifically, bodies of water. Though blue may have a general connection to water, aquas have a more specific connection to bodies of water. Indeed, aqua literally means water. Aquas, more than any other color, are affected by its value. The darker it is, the more terrible it is. The lighter it is, the more inviting it is. The reason for this is simple. The water it represents. Turquoise and cyan are lighter aquas connected with peace and harmony. This is due to the streams and rivers that they represented. All of the language used for these life-giving rivers will be similar to that of these colors. Cool, calming, peaceful. Whereas when you look at dark aquas and teals, it's almost reversed. Once again, the reason is simple, the sea. Salt water is not suitable for drinking. The moment we go in there, we're at the bottom of the food chain and the sea itself can kill us by its very nature. Indeed, so deep is the connections between the seas and oceans that it is a direct representative of chaos biblically. However, this doesn't mean that dark aquas and teals have entirely negative traits. Dark aquas and teals are easier on the eyes and they evoke ideas of spirituality, luxury, and beauty. They are also connected with free thinking, meditation, and introspection. Neutrals and shades. Black, white, brown, and gray are considered neutral colors. However, black, white, and gray are colors with quotation marks around them because they're not actually considered colors but shades. Red, green, and blue combine to make white light. But if you combine red, yellow, and blue equally, they create black paint. 
Now you can probably see why we go on about the red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue makes pure white light, which can be split into the seven spectrum colors, as proven by Sir Isaac Newton. We see the color white when white light strikes off a white object because it reflects all of the colors of the light equally and absorbs none of the colors. And as you can imagine, with black, it's the opposite. It absorbs all of the colors and reflects nothing back to us. This is why they are not considered true colors because they don't have a single wavelength of light to reflect back to us. Instead, they are all of the wavelengths. People will call adding white to colors a tint and adding black to colors a shade. True grays are similar to black and white in the sense that they will reflect or absorb all light to certain degrees. But we find that most grays have some color within them. Going in depth, we knew there was going to be some controversy surrounding black and white, but throughout history until very recently, all of the associations had to do with reflecting and absorbing all light. The, the beginning, beginning and, and the, the end. end. White. White is the combination of all colors reflected back at us. It is linked with new beginnings. This is why it is linked with purity, because it is yet to become something. White has been used in connection with many religious rituals. Within Christianity, it is linked to holiness and purity. In Hinduism, it is used to represent divine truth. With the ancient Greek religions, it is linked to healing, protection, and fertility. With the ancient Nords, prosperity, luck, and victory. Feng Shui uses white to promote and attract positive energy. This idea of purity is cross-cultural as both traditional European weddings and Japanese Shinto weddings will use white as a symbolic representation of purity with their brides. This connection with healing remains even today. Doctors and nurses will wear white. Indeed, even in fantasy games, the white mage is the healing mage. However, white has negative traits. It is empty, cold, and distant. Indeed, if you want your bad guy to look particularly bad, have them dressed in all white. This has given rise to the trope known as the villain in the white suit. Some examples of white as the predominant shade in a fighting force are white scars. Comstar. Protectorate of Minoth. Stormtroopers. Knights Excelsior. Color associations. Purity, perfection, innocence, simplicity, and virginity. Positive traits. Cleanliness, clarity, positive energy, healing, and hope. Negative traits. Cold, distant, empty, indifferent, and naive. Black. Black is the color of absolutes. As a shade, it is intimidating, especially when it becomes more light absorbing with shades like Vanta Black. It has a sense of dread. Black is also the color of formality. Like its opposite white, it is also used in many traditional ceremonies, usually to do with endings like funerals. Those who wear black are also arbiters of finality like judges, priests, and police. In some tiered systems, like in karate, the black belt is the final belt and the white belt is the first belt. Black is also connected to evil and it's not just a Western tradition. In Hinduism, black ink is used to dot a baby to make them imperfect and impure to avoid the evil eye which wishes the good and pure harm. In Islam, the Quran states that the gates of hell are black and it connects it with evil seven different times. Black in Chinese culture is connected with destruction, evil, and disasters. Heibang is the name for organized crime and literally translates to black help. However, in more modern times, black is connected with elegance and fashion. It is the evergreen color of the fashion world. It is serious, sleek, and powerful. Black stands out against the most intense of colors. Some examples of a fighting force with black as the predominant shade are Black Legion Black Knight Legion Black Templar Shadow Troopers Slaves to Darkness Color Associations Power, Mourning, Serious, Intimidation, and Mystery Positive traits. Elegance, seduction, sophistication, polite, and discreet. Negative traits. Controlling, evil, loss, nothingness, and despair. 
Gray. Gray is the color of neutrality to the point that it's a joke. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Gray is also the color of architecture and conformism, probably because of the color of concrete. This is due to its lack of response. Due to the fact that it rejects all colors, even black and white. This is why it is the color of neutrality. Also, it has a connection with nature, particularly slate rocks and that of mountainous terrain. That's where we get this idea of neutrality. In the human perspective, they are unchanging, taking thousands of years to erode. However, gray does cover a lot of colors, like pewter, charcoal, and taupe are considered to be in the gray family as well. Once we go outside of neutral gray. Things become a bit more clouded. Everything we say here fits under the color psychology of a neutral gray. But once we start adding colors or shading or tinting it, then the meanings change. However, unlike green, there isn't a good guide as to how gray's meanings change because they become something completely new. Adding a color to gray doesn't change the meaning of gray, but rather takes away from it. Because gray's meanings surround the idea of neutrality, adding something to it simply takes those ideas away. But if you go lighter or darker, it starts to take the meanings of whites and blacks instead. But when you use gray as a color in language, it's quite unusual. It doesn't actually translate it in the same way in design language. Like gray markets, gray areas, and gray zones, usually indicating ambiguity. There's only one thing that we know of that uses gray in this way. Video games. Video games use gray to show undiscovered areas, locked characters, things you don't have access to yet. However, we have never seen this design language used in non-digital products. Some examples of a fighting force which use gray as their predominant shade are Pre-Heresy World Bearers, Clan Wolf Gray Kashik, Steel Phalanx, Flesh Eater Court, Carcharodons. Color associations: compromise, neutrality, professional, impartial, and pragmatic. Positive traits: reliable, wise, cautious, mature, and sensible. Negative traits: cold, indecisive, dreariness, lack of confidence and energy. Brown. First, before we talk about brown, we have to talk about what brown is. Because it's not a secondary color, nor a tertiary color, nor is it a shade. Brown is known as a composite or compound color, depending on who you're talking to. It can be made by mixing different amounts of all of the primary colors, or mixing a primary color with its secondary opposite: green with red, or blue with orange. The reason we need to talk about this is because if you thought green had variable meanings, it's got nothing on brown. First of all, brown has all of the human skin tones within it, so there's a lot of variables and mixed meanings within that. Let's talk about what most people think of when they think of brown. Medium brown. Brown's strongest connections comes from what sits beneath all of us. The Earth, not the planet, but dirt, loam, Earth. This is where most of its color psychology and design language comes from. It is connected with reliability, safety, and security. It is a warm and welcoming color, probably due to its second biggest association, trees and wood. Vital to life for humans, trees have always provided us a way to avoid predators, and wood has provided us a way to build shelter from the elements. This is why it is connected to nature to a primal degree. Brown isn't an all positive color either. Many people think of it as dull, unclean, or disgusting. But even with these negative traits, they almost reinforce their positive traits of being reliable, honest, and hardy. But unlike green, brown doesn't have a clear guide on how the color meanings change. For example, no matter how much purple you add to a brown, it doesn't change brown's meanings to that of purple. Purple and brown are diametrically opposed to each other in design language. It will either be a dull purple or a brown. 
At what point it shifts will depend on the person, but any consistent use of this purplish brown will muddle the design language. But adding red and orange does seem to give brown a certain level of warmth and energy. As you can see, it's a hard color to use. Some examples of fighting forces which use brown as predominant color are Coconut Crab Tyranids Warrior House Fujita USARF Beast Men Armageddon Steel Legion Color Associations Nature, Earthy, Stable, Grounded and Protective Positive Traits Dependable, Honest, Secure, Comforting and Supportive Negative traits. Simple, boring, predictable, stingy, and unsophisticated. Metallics, a primer. We will continue with our color psychology on metallics, but why do most people stop before getting to metallics? This is because most design language and color psychology comes from traditional art. While not a perfect science, it does have a long tradition of study. Now with the internet, data draggers have collected information from internet providers, social media companies, and other sources to gain even more information. However, Metallics hasn't had the same level of depth to its study for two reasons. Due to its reflective nature, it is only truly possible to see it through video and it is extremely difficult to show it through images. Pictorially, the only way you could show metal was through the use of non-metallic metal techniques using gradients of color to show that reflectiveness. Mica flakes were discovered relatively recently historically speaking, at the Ruggles Mine in New Hampshire in 1803, and glitter was invented in 1934 by Henry Rushman. The first metallic paints were created in the 1930s, and this is far from the large-scale production that we see today. All of this is to say that metallics in design language is somewhat new compared to all of the other colors throughout all of human history. Metallic's color psychology will come from the metals that they are attempting to imitate rather than any true color. However, the metals they are imitating do evoke true emotions out of people. And that is where we have based our color psychology research. The first thing we discovered when it came to Metallic's design language was this. It is all about shades and tints. The darker it was, the literally older the material was, at least in terms of design language. Darker material would have people using older language. For example, they would use terms like bronze when referring to a more brass-like item. This led us to believe that there was a direct parallel between shade and time. The deeper the shade, the more ancient the feeling, whereas it was the direct opposite when it came to tints. The lighter the tint, the more technologically advanced or futuristic the item was. As such, metallics will contain two groups of colors rather than individualistic colors. They will represent the value and reflectiveness respectively. Iron, steel, and chrome. The steel category contains three distinct colors, but this is more like a scale rather than three distinct categories. Iron will be used as a name for the darkest of these colors, steel will be the middle ground, and chrome will be the highest point. The darker and less reflective a metal seems to be, the more durable and iron-like it seems to be. For the most part, unless it has industrial signifiers like rivets and bolts or other markers of post-industrialization, the metal is seen as older or less modern. We have found that the reflectiveness of an item counts for a great deal in how much it is admired. This may be Narcissus modern influence, however, we do find that less reflectiveness equals more durability, at least psychologically speaking. An example here would be steel beams or steel medieval armor. 
Although most of us realize that the technology used in creating steel beams is more advanced than that of the knight, there is still that nagging feeling that the knight's armor is more advanced than the steel beams, probably because of the artistry involved in creating it, the curvature of the armor as such. But we believe that the reflectiveness, at least in terms of color psychology, is the best indicator of technological superiority. Iron. Iron is given to the idea of durability, honesty, and protectiveness. Its color psychology profile is closer to that of brown. It is dependable, unsophisticated, and predictable, like the people who use it. Except unlike brown, it has hints of danger to it, for obvious reasons. Linguistically today, we still use terms like packing iron to mean that you are armed. The big iron on his hip, though using more modern verbiage, the term is packing heat, though the point remains the same. Iron is also used in terms of being unbreakable. For example, a person with an iron gut or iron will is somebody who cannot be broken, either metaphorically or physically. Steel. Steel's color psychology profile matches closest to that of black. It is serious, it's powerful, and it's also cold. It takes its negative elements from white and positive elements from black. Even though ironically it's made up of just grays, it takes none of its meanings from gray. Gray's meanings surround neutrality, whereas with steel, there is a hostility about it, probably because it's used in the manufacture of arms and armor. Steel is known for its strength, but also its unbending quality, especially when it comes to facing outside forces, at least psychologically. Terms like nerves of steel means that a person won't respond poorly to negative influences. Steel yourself means to make yourself hard and strong in preparation for a negative event. This unbendable nature is also found in other languages. For example, Kang Tie Zinan. It literally translates to straight man of steel. Metaphorically speaking, it says that they are straight as an arrow. If we look to compare, there is one thing we cannot ignore. The man of steel, Superman. Steel's color psychology is powerful, uncompromising, and cold. Chrome. Chrome has a certain retro aesthetic to it due to its use in futurism, which was popular in the 1910s to 1930s. Chrome is the color of the future. One of the best ways to make something seem futuristic is to maximize its reflectiveness. However, logically, reflectiveness is contextual. So most of the times we think of clean lights and bright skies when it comes to reflectiveness. However, sometimes when it comes to reflecting certain things like a cyberpunk dystopia, you reflect neon lights and dank undergrounds, giving a sense of ennui. As this is focused on miniature painters, you won't be able to get this naturally unless you put significant effort into a diorama. Chrome will likely keep its original meaning with miniature painting due to the places in which you play. They usually have nice, clean lighting. Chrome takes its positive notes from white and its negative notes from black, almost the polar opposite of steel. On the positive end, it is given to the ideas of purity and perfection, but on the negative end, there's this feeling of soullessness and nothingness. This could be due to its connection to futurism. The 1910s to 1930s promised a brighter future. However, the reality of that period was a dark shadow was cast over history. Or it could simply be that people fear a mechanical future, that uncanny valley of things not quite right. A future where you are left behind. Some examples of a fighting force that use steel as a predominant shade are Necrons Grandian Crusaders Aleph Hallowed Knights Orgoth Iron Color Associations Protective, Durable, Stable, Grounded, and intimidating. Positive traits. Dependable, honest, strength, comforting, reliable. Negative traits. Cold, cruel, 
predictable, crude, and violent. Steel. Color associations. Danger, intimidation, cool, grounded, and competent. Positive traits. Valiant, confident, precise, sophistication, and reliable. Negative traits. Cold, empty, indifferent, unimaginative, and violent. Chrome. Color associations. Honest, perfection, simplicity, untouched, and purity. Positive traits. Elegance, seduction, cleanliness, clarity, and hope. Negative traits. Parody or heartless honesty, empty, despair, nothingness, and soullessness. Brass, bronze, and gold. This is where we first discovered the linguistic connection between time and metal. The more ancient a metal, the more ancient the words used to describe it. Except that's not quite right. They used terms like bronze to describe brass-like objects because they were darker in color. However, unlike steel. There isn't that direct connection between how reflective something is and how technologically advanced it is. This changes once we hit gold. The reason for this is probably due to the fact that gold is quite ancient, and people throughout history have very much enjoyed the look of polished gold. Though there may be some overlap in the names and qualities of certain metals. We are going to use the term brass for our darkest and least reflective of metals. We will use the term bronze for our midtone, and we will use the term gold for the most reflective and highest value of these metals. Once again, this is a scale, just like the steel category. However, unlike before, once we hit gold, it seems to have its own distinct. Category, brass. An important note that we should take into consideration is culture. Because our focus is more on wargaming, Warhammer seems to have a distinct culture when it comes to the use of the color brass. It's the color of corn. Thus, it seems that it has a connection with evil. In fact, the darker the golds, the more it seems to be associated with evil. However, this may follow with real life. Like, for example, with the development of civilization, cultures all across the world spend a lot of time polishing gold. Like with the Chinese fool lions, Hindu god statues, or even the gaudy statues made by the Greeks and Romans. Quick note on the marble statues: according to history, they were actually painted in gaudy colors. Barbarians like the Mongols, Gauls, or Norse probably wouldn't have spent as much time polishing their metals because the reflectiveness would have given them away in ambushes. Raiding, as a rule, is not seen as civil or wholesome, which is what these barbaric civilizations were known for. This is probably why we relate darker metals to a sense of evil, because city-building civilizations were the ones being raided. Not the raiders themselves. Thus, it has modern cross-cultural relevance. Brass, like bronze, is not a precious metal, but it does have indicators of wealth. Some may think of brass as elegant, reassuring, and calm, especially when used as an accent to a larger piece. However, when you use it in large amounts, it has a feeling of cold anger, brutalism, and barbarity. Maybe because of its semi-reflective quality and shade, it seems like a more precious metal. But those who wear it don't know its true value. It can have a cheap and battered look as well. Brass is either fool's gold or gold tarnished by those who use it, at least in terms of design language and color psychology. Bronze. Bronze is a color of strength and support. This is probably due to the fact that it was our first step technologically forward in terms of metals. It does have a certain cheapness to it. However, unlike brass, it doesn't fool anyone to thinking that it's more valuable because it already has a high reflective value. Like steel, it has a certain reliability and honesty to it. However, unlike steel, it has a certain elegance to it. Bronze has a certain level of authenticity to it. It isn't gold, and it never will be. But it doesn't mean it's not useful. 
Bronze has a connection to both holiness and wealth. However, it is outshone both metaphorically and literally by gold. Though the Ark of the Covenant was made out of wood and gold, the poles used to carry it were made out of bronze, representing strength and durability. Third placeholders are given bronze because of its resistance to corrosion and durability and still makes a great showpiece, though not quite as worthy as silver or gold. Though not a precious metal for many ancient people and for some modern, bronze is an indicator of wealth. Gold. Gold screams wealth and success, affluence and opulence. Gold is for winners. Quite literally, first place winners are given gold medals. If something is of great value, it is golden. Even linguistically, we use it this way. Nature's first green is golden. Silence is golden. And golden handcuffs. These concepts have been taken even further. In the popular anime Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, a perfect being in the Xingyi's language is a golden being. In this case, Xingyi's is a stand-in for Chinese, but even in Chinese culture, it has the same meaning. It is unsurprising that gold has a connection to religion and religious practices. However, it is likely that the preciousness of gold is responsible for this effect, not that it is inherently holy. Gold in Hinduism is believed to be a conductor of positive energy. With Christianity, the cross was often made from gold, symbolizing Christ's golden sacrifice. In Buddhism, the golden lotus represents the ultimate achievement in enlightenment. In Islam, the use of gold is forbidden in clothing. The Quran says 934, And those who hoard gold and silver and spend it not in the way of God, give them tidings of a painful punishment. Gold is also used as symbols of office, as well as a plethora of other symbolic signifiers. Gold is now used in electronics, giving it more than just a simple symbolic use. However, gold is not all good. Most of gold's negative traits come from those who use it. It is seen as arrogant, pretentious, and egocentric. It is the color of wealth for all it means both good and ill. Some examples of fighting forces that use gold metallics as their primary color are the Adeptus Custodes, Kuritan Kintaro, Code 1 Zeta, Hammers of Sigma, Golden Demons, Brass, Color Associations, Competency, Prestige, Simple, Fire, Dependability, Positive Traits, Warmth, Potential, Elegance, Reassuring, Calm. Negative traits. Tacky, cheap, brutalistic, crude, and cold anger. Bronze color associations. Practicality, earthiness, maturity, truthful, and dependability. Positive traits. Supportive, strength, security, soothing, and motivational. Negative traits. Boastful, cheap, resentment. Mediocre and disappointment. Gold color associations. Wealth, power, privilege, prestige, and prosperity. Positive traits. Confidence, success, optimistic, certainty, and charisma. Negative traits. Heartlessness, uncaring, dispassionate, untrusting, and soulless. Metallic's conclusion. While metallics may seem like we're talking about specific colors or textures in this case, we are not. We are talking about a spectrum going from darkest to lightest, going from least reflective to most reflective. So even though we've got brass, bronze, and gold, iron, steel, and chrome. With metals, it may look like a texture that you're trying to go for, but at the end of the day, what's the most important thing is how the color reads. When you squint your eyes, what is the color that comes through? So some of the times, steel might look 
quite close to a brighter shade of iron or it might look closer to silver. It depends on the effect that you're going for. That's why we harp a lot about the reflectiveness and the shade of the metal. Indeed, Sunny even brought up a metal, silver, that we don't talk about, hmm. which could fit quite well within chrome. However, it might be closer to steel. Look at those psychological profiles. While chrome does have connections with futurism and very specific things, you can use this as a good guide rather than an absolute rule. So remember, look to the reflectiveness as well as the value shade or tint for what you are looking for rather than a specific color. Neo colors. Neo means new and there was no neat category to fit this into. There is always something new. In ancient times, it was simply dyeing a cloth purple. But nowadays, there's all sorts of new things. Color shifting paint, candy colors, all sorts of weird and wonderful creations. There isn't a lot of data, but here are some basic associations. Neo color associations. Wonder, fascination, and interest. Positive traits. Innovative, expressive, and novel. Negative traits. Gimmicky, loud, and obnoxious. With neo colors, there are some simple rules to follow. Color shift. With color shift, the simplest thing to do is to follow the colors shown in the color shift for their color psychology. Candy or metallic colors. Intensify the original color's meaning. And remember that reflectiveness level also affects how technologically advanced it may seem. Neon or fluorescent colors. Add the following meanings, anxiety, superficial and abrasive. And with this, intensify the original colors meanings, but drop any subtle meanings that may be associated with that color. Neon colors are designed to be eye-catching. It is an attempt to be special or unique. Conclusion. You're of course welcome to paint your miniature however you like. We're not trying to control anyone. What we are trying to do is to put forth the information that has been collected by artists, marketing people, psychologists on color theory so that you can be more aware of the feelings that they evoke when you are putting them into use for design. In short, what we are doing is we are giving you a mental tool for your tool belt. Yes, a lot of color theory is an unconscious process. We want to make it more conscious for you. We hope that this helps you on your hobby journey. However, there are gonna be some follow-up videos on this. One on color harmonies and another on color psychology practical application. We hope to see you for those ones. In the meantime, keep, keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. wet. Bye-bye.